welcome to a magnificent um, Queensland morning. Uh, very vibrant this morning, so I'm just going to share something with you. This is more for um, Women's Health Week, and uh, I did a lot for uh, Men's Health Week, and uh, we haven't actually mentioned anything uh, for the Women's Health Week, so I thought I would um, share this with you uh, this morning. So we're just going to do a pose, uh, which can be very useful for the pelvic floor uh, trampolining. So some people call it the pelvic floor. I actually prefer to call it the uh, pelvic hammock um, because it has the ability to uh, act as another diaphragm. A diaphragm not for obviously breathing in air, but um, a diaphragm as in it's a horizontal structure that mimics some of the, mm, the elastic properties potentially of um, the respiratory diaphragm. They can both talk to each other like walkie-talkies, potentially, again. And if they're not, then, yeah, often there is um, there is a, a discord, a nation, or there's some sort of a, a blockage or a held tension in one or the other, or both. So let's, let's um, do a pose which will uh, help to facilitate the elasticity of the pelvic diaphragm, pelvic hammock. Let's, let's just do it and then afterwards we can sort of talk about it a little bit. For this you'll need uh, two blocks, two blocks of the same height. It doesn't matter if they look different, but um, the, the height is the um, primary of primary importance. Um, because you're going to put the sit bones, that's the ischial tuberosities, on both of the blocks, one on each. sitting nice and comfortably with both of the sit bones on the uh, blocks you can position your feet in a way that feels like you're slightly um, challenging not forcing just challenging the um, uh, groin region to, to stretch out a little bit more once you've done that you can put the elbows with both arms into the inside of your lower thigh and then we can start to open a little bit we can start to use our hands and our arms, forearms as a bit of a, a fulcrum force, a lever to open up uh, the two legs. And it doesn't have to be extreme. You just get a little bit of a sense of um, widening and stretching in and around that groin region and obviously your hips as well. If you want to take it a little bit further, obviously take your feet out a little bit further and then we can put the fists together. So that just takes the hips out a little bit, so a little bit wider, or the legs out a little bit wider. So coming back into a position, the, the Namaste sort of position, you know, palms together, palm in palm. Then we can start to contract and release the pelvic floor. You might want to do that by getting a sense of the anal sphincter muscle or the area around. Uh, around the vagina, just contracting, releasing, contracting, releasing, contracting, releasing. Once you've got the sense of those, one of those areas or both, then you can start to get a sense of uh, an aspect of the musculature that's more internal and further up to the pelvic floor itself. Contracting, releasing, contracting, releasing. The reason I say it in that way, as in you first have a focus point, such as the anal sphincter muscle, to begin with, is because often the pelvic floor is uh, a little bit, um, well, not there. It can sometimes become quite numb or dissociated or not apparently uh, in the sensorium. It can be a, a little bit uh, distant. So that's another reason for doing this particular pose. So just contracting, releasing, contracting, releasing. And incidentally, that dissociation is um, a, a key feature for both uh, genders. It's um, a very common uh, area of dissociation. Who knows for what reasons? Um, often because it's the, it's the end of the body, we don't necessarily you know, acknowledge that much. Some people might be too much, who knows? But um, it starts to become an area that uh, 
it's not necessarily in balance or in tune with the, the same sort of um, sensitivity, for example, as the hands, and so on and so on. Okay, so in this position, contracting, releasing, contracting, releasing, it becomes like a trampoline. Now, the, it's the releasing which is the most important aspect here. So it's almost like letting go and getting a sense of that letting go. So maybe contracting for a couple of seconds and then releasing for a slow count of, say, maybe one, two, and then contracting again, maybe for a count of one. Or if you want to, one, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. It's actually the other way around, because it looks a little bit like that. One, two, one, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three, four. And you can alter the ratio, of course. So one, one, two, one, one, two. I suggest you do, sorry, that's not altering the ratio. And so you can go one, 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 or one, two, one, two, or one, one, two. Or if you want to, you can lengthen the out as well. So one, one, two, three. Play with that, play with the ratio just to get a sense of what is uh, affording you a, more of a, an awareness, a sensitivity of the area. And keep working it like that. Now, this is only a priming technique in order to get to the non-technique. What is the non-technique? The non-technique is to feel the essence of non-doing. So not needing to actually do anything, any of the contractions, but to feel the area, the arising and the passing, and actually not just that area, but the whole of the body. We're only using this as an exact, uh, an example area. And so if you can get a sense of the whole of the body, including this area, as arising and passing, then that's a non-doing um, modus operandi. In fact, it's not even a modus operandi, it's that you're not actually, you're not doing anything in order to actually feel the awareness or the the, um, the the essence of your physiology, the essence of your physiology is a rising and passing. It's a it's a hum. There's a hum at the depth of an engaged physiology. A numb physiology is not uh, an optimized physiology. It's um, a physiology which has gone into Auto drive, uh, some sort of habits or pattern of experience will prevent the full um, utility of that that particular region or the whole body, perhaps. Put that into a little bit of a context using a few metaphors. Um, I like to use the metaphor of the dit dit, hut hut, la la, and mmm. So the, the dit dit here is the, the way the dualistic mind wants to operate. So this is right dit, this is wrong dit. This is up, this is down. This is um, black, this is white. Dit, 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 like a robot. It's like a dit, dit robot, which is useful to understand that here's an object that uh, I want to differentiate from that object. This is a particular way of perceiving the world and that's the opposite way. Right? <laughs> it's the opposite sort of playing with each other, really. The hut hut is where the survival response of overriding this object, hut 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 hut. You know, imagine one of these SWAT teams sort of are going into a, an environment to um, o override the enemy, hut hut hut, or getting away from a particular predator, hut 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 hut, run and run and run 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 run. Sorry about the amount of the um, metaphors, but some they're, they're quite useful when you understand that there is. A way of perceiving uh, objects in a way of manipulating them, uh, utilizing them, uh, dissociating from them, and that is the la la bit. So the la la is where we go into la 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 la. There's um, uh, uh, not acknowledging a particular object, dissociating away from a particular object, or la 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 la, uh, absorbing. Uh, oneself into the object. Is this still a form of duality because there's still the I that's getting absorbed into the object 
or there's the eye that's getting away from the object but it's a form of dissociation um, not acknowledging that um, there is uh, um, an, an essence to that object that can be felt as not separate a nice lovely mm comes in mm, it's the hum of the body the undercurrent which is there all the time potentially when there is awareness of that undercurrent there is a mm, an amplification of the physiology at its essence its source which enhances the physiology enables the cells to divide at the time that is most opportune and it helps other cells to talk to each other helps the ligands and uh, the receptor sites come into a vibration that attunes and of course you know there are millions of uh, receptor sites and trillions of ligands um, and obviously you know the, 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 the body's full of them um, so if we can get into a sense of feeling the essence of uh, our physiology we will optimize it no two ways about it it's not rocket science really in fact actually it's the simplicity of simplicity um, we have binary simplicity which is usually the simplicity that people who allude to uh, keep it simple stupid yeah you've heard of this um this acronym you keep it simple stupid is usually alluding to this binary simplicity and actually this isn't the simplicity i'm talking about here if we're talking about insight simplicity what is then it's a felt sense it's a deep non-dual a non-doing um, simplicity so we have the binary simplicity which is bs and we have the um the, the, the real insight simplicity that you can't put into a, a right or a wrong a good or a bad a, a black or a white it just is insight simplicity it is that's what it is and uh, it is so simple okay enough of that this this is the the position so this is the the um, position to really enhance the ability for that pelvic floor to contract a bit right contract release contract release contract release and then to go completely still with the echo of what you've just practiced the echo will ignite the engine it will ignite the ability to feel that deep physiology as a, mm, a hum, a deep hum, not a dualistic need to um, change it or to alter it, but just to feel the natural um, ability, the natural um, source of your own physiology in this region and the whole of the body. So let's bring in the rest of the body now. So now we got that hum or the sense of the hum. Rub the hands together. Two very useful areas to just contact. It's a cold morning this morning, so let's do it for a little bit longer. One hand onto the area just below the navel. Other hand onto the base of the skull, leaning forward a little bit, but tucking in the chin with your head. You're getting a sense of those two regions. Useful to rub the hands to get that stimulus. The hands bud out of the heart as an embryo. So they're very sensitive. They're full of nerve endings, receptor sites, everywhere. And um, I don't know, there's, there's, a, there's something even deeper than that about the hands. Potentially when they're not doing, they have a, a very deep potential to sense, to imbibe, yeah, imbibe information, but also to acknowledge non-duality. Um, non doing. You can also do this one. So you're rubbing the back of the hand. The back of the hand, once it's become more there, if it wasn't there before, you go onto the sacrum at the back, and again the other hand onto the skull, getting a sense of either end of the spine. So two water beds in a way, so one area of cerebrospinal fluid at the top which is a, like a system at the, um, the, the bottom of the brain and the other area in the sacrum which is again a, a reservoir of sorts for cerebrospinal fluid so 
it's more than a reservoir actually because it is subtly moving uh, all of the time potentially a liquid light actually in contact with the pelvic floor and the echo that lets it go hum mm. the rest of the body is hum rising and passing at a very fluid and potent level and you're also getting a sense of either pole of your spine of, of, of your vertebrae that's it for now let's um maybe um expand upon this for um the women's health and of course you know this is you know something that is uh, androgynous really I mean, anybody will get benefit from doing this. I'm just using this as an exemplar for Women's Health Week when it, uh, when it comes. So it's androgyny. Um, it's uh, also um, it's, it's non-duality, it's non-being. It's, it's a way of becoming aware of something that's almost embryonic. Not needing to... You're igniting something in order to get to the essence of the non-doing, which, you know, is... The essence of, in a way, relationship. So you get a sense of uh, another person, and then you no longer have an intent, or you drop the intent, or you realise that there, there is uh, something much deeper than intent, and you become one with that person, or thing, or group of people. You're sensing the essence, which is a, a, a non-dual interaction.